Hey Tarot Tribe, it's Dustin from A Modern Metaphysic Man, and today I thought we could hang out and take a trip through the El Goliath Tarot. Um, this deck is probably one of the most anticipated decks of the end of this year. Um, it is an independently published deck by the artist who goes by the name Goliath. Um, and it comes all the way from Australia, which is awesome. Um, the deck is beautiful. Just so that you're aware, the only thing I've done is I have unwrapped this deck um, from all of its packaging and I've thumbed through the deck to make sure that I have all of the cards. So other than that, this is kind of good, going to kind of be a sort of first impressions walkthrough video. Um, so yeah, let's dive into it. The box itself is a very sturdy, magnetically classed box. It's a hard box, it's beautiful, it's huge. Um, it's massive. <laughs> and uh, the outside is illustrated. There are some sort of um, titles on this side. It says the El Goliath Tarot deck written and illustrated by Goliath. Um, the back has some depictions of the cards. Um, and it says the El Goliath Tarot Deck, an alchemical shamanic tarot manifesto featuring 95 cards suited for spiritual divination, mystical exploration, readings, and guidance, includes, including guidebook. Um, and then on this side, we have more sort of examples of the cards. Um, and so when you open it up, there is a magnetic clasp, like I said, which is really nice. I love these um, types of boxes. And the box is super sturdy. Um, on the inside, there is um, this little dis depiction of a couple of hip uh, hippos um, on the inside, and there's these purple ribbons, um, and it says, a touch of magic, a touch of shadow, a twinkle of beauty, a spark in tarot, a feeling of mystery, a feeling of ponder, shuffle the cards and take a wander. So I think that was pretty cool. It's got this kind of gold print. Um, so it's very, very nicely put together. We're gonna move this off to the side so we have a little more room. Um, inside of the package, when it was mailed to me, it came wrapped in um, just a beautiful, plain sort of, um, uh, what is it called? Tissue paper. <laughs> there we go, I can use my words. Um, that was tied with some twine. It was really nice. And inside was this thank you note, um, which says I wanna, express my heartfelt gratitude and say a big thank you for supporting me on my journey. This is a very special, uh, this is a very special, there is a very special reason <laughs> you have acquired this deck. So please treat, uh, treasure it and keep it safe. You have a piece of my soul in your hands. Never forget the power that is, that's in the magic of your own creation. Magic spelled with a C, which I thought was interesting instead of a CK. Um, and then you also get a little printout on just, you know, normal photo paper um, of one of the cards, which is nice. It's a nice little touch. Um, I got the Ace of Wands, which was very fitting for my life right now. And then the first thing you are greeted with is the guidebook. Now, the guidebook is really nice. Um, the cover says the El Goliath Tarot deck written and illustrated by Goliath on the reverse. Um, it has a little blurb from the artist. Art is how I see myself, how I express myself. It's my interpretation of the world I'm in. Art and creation are the only things that I never get sick of. They heal me and lift me, keeping, my, keeping me buoyant every time I'm down or feeling like I'm sinking. I invite you into my world my very own tarot manifesto. All the cards in this deck talk to each other and hold a fragment of my heart and soul with them. This is my gift to you. Welcome to my El Goliath tarot deck. And I'm assuming this is an image of the artist. Um, I'm pretty sure it is. I've seen a couple other photos of him uh, when the deck was being created. Um, and I'll be sure to link in the description below, like I always do, a link to the artist's website so that you can find more information about them. Um, the inside of the book is really nice. It has tons of information um, and it has illustrations of the card. The only complaint that I have is the font is super tiny. <laughs> um, it's like a 0.8 font. Um, so if you have um, 
a hard time reading small fonts, that could be a challenge for you. Um, but there's tons of information in it. I just think that it may have been better if the images were maybe made smaller so that the text could be larger, right? Because I'm really looking at the guidebook for the text and not the images. Um, other than that, there's tons of great information. Um, the major arcana cards are basically almost three pages each, and then the minors um, are basically a page each. Um, and they have, you know, a keyword section and then a description with divinatory meanings and then a reversal keywords. Um, so it's nice. Um, lots of information in here. Um, but again, the font is super duper tiny, but it's a great book. Um, so the deck itself, pull this behemoth. Out. Now, the, the the bottom of the box is probably the thing I'm the most disappointed in because it has this really cheap plastic sleeve in it. It does come with a little ribbon that's stuck in, but this thing is awful. Um, there's nothing underneath of it. I might actually take this out and then make a little bed for it similar to what was done in the Brady Tarot um, as a box modification. I'm not huge on modifications, whether it be boxes or decks, but I hate this. Um, this is like the suck. <laughs> so other than that, the box is great. The deck itself, is huge these are the card backs the backs are beautiful they have a um a slightly green tint with a gold uh infinity symbol on them just to give you a size comparison um, this is the witch's tarot published by llewellyn which is a standard tarot size so as you can see the deck is massive i like big decks and i cannot lie um the deck is gilded, so it has a really nice sort of antique gold gilding to it, which is really great. Um, and so yeah, let's let's start with a flip through. So each of the cards, it's very animalistic. Um, there's no, I don't I don't even remember if there is humans depicted in this. I don't think there is. Um, but I love this full card. This little mouse is adorable. Let's get this nice and centered. Um, so yeah, the bottom of the card has um, the full, it has the title in Sanskrit, the title in his own font, and then sort of like um, a keyword type title. So um, the Fool, and this is the Eternal Vagabond. Um, some people love this, some people hate it. I'm rather indifferent to it. Um, I believe the reason why Sanskrit was chosen is that he, um, I believe he, he may be, um, he may actually write in Sanskrit. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but it really doesn't bother me. It bothers, I've, I've seen quite a few negative responses to this and I don't understand why. Um, if you don't like it, that's fine. But you know, I don't know, it, it's it's fine for me. So the Fool, I love this magician. He was a panther in this like cool headdress. He's got the infinity symbol. Um, it's super cool. High Priestess, the Empress, which is beautiful. It's a beautiful peacock. Um, and the other thing that bothers some people is this border at the top here as well. Now, I don't know why, if this was either a conscious decision or if the pieces of artwork that he chose from his personal portfolio perhaps this was a horizontal piece. Um, and so in order to maintain the aspect ratio of the card while making it vertical, um, he decided to put these uh, borders on the top. They really don't bother me. Um, but again, I've seen a lot of negative feedback about that. 
they do seem inconsistent and I wish that there was consistency to them, but it seems like he's pulled a lot of the, the imagery from this deck from his own personal um, portfolio. And so, you know, I could imagine that a lot of his pieces may have been horizontal and he wanted to preserve the aspect ratio when turning them vertical in order to get as much of the important part of the image in. So I, I, I assume that's why. And it really, for me, doesn't detract anything. Um, it's just there, so not a big deal. But lots of symbolism here. You know, you'll you'll see um, different kind of symbols throughout the deck. Not only with the animals that are used and the scenes depicted, but also um, more traditional symbolic things, which is cool. The emperor. Hierophant. And the imagery is just striking. It's all black and white. It's gorgeous. It's exquisitely drawn. The the talent that Goliath has as a as an artist is just phenomenal. And the cardstock of the deck is really nice. It's a nice thick cardstock. It does have a glossy finish, um, which it's not a super slippery deck, um, but the gloss is nice. I really prefer having a glossy finish like this on black and white decks because it really makes the contrast really nice. It gives you those really rich, deep black tones um, and those really nice highlights. And it also makes it easy to clean because um, you can just take like a microfiber cloth like this um, and you know, give it a, a rub if you've got like fingerprints or, you know, whatever, and it's not gonna damage the card, which I love. Um, so I love finishes like this. So that was the lovers, and now we're on to the chariot, which is beautiful. Sort of a Sakura festival type thing going on here. Justice which is in our eighth position for this deck. The Hermit, which is this little armadillo who's super cute. It's, it's perfect. In the context of this deck, I think this is a great depiction of the Hermit card. The Wheel. Strength. This was one of the cards and artworks that drew me to this deck. Um, it's just beautiful. It, the lion, like you can feel the power in the lion, but in his eye, you can kind of see the apprehension where he's like, oh shit, this thing can kill me, right? Um, it's, it's just so beautiful. And you still have your, um, infinity symbol here down at the bottom, which is great. Hanged man, very sort of nod to Buddhism, which is great. I love that. The suspended monkey. <laughs> this death card is so moving. With the death moth and the antlers, and it's just, it's perfect. The skeleton of the snake, the serpent. And the title for the card is The Metamorphic Moth. Temperance, koi in a pond, lilies with a yin yang. It's perfect. This is probably the creepiest devil card I have ever seen. Like this goat is the devil. Um, and I like his alternative title, which is the Master of Lies. I think that's very fitting. He's very creepy with a serpent. Tower. Poor birds with babies. The star. What a great depiction of the star, right? This chopped up piece of tree with, you know, the sort of rings that you find when a tree is cut down. Um, very non-traditional, but very, very beautiful. 
the moon. The sun. <laughs> Great sun card. El Sol. Judgment. It's just a wonderful judgment card. A lot of people have talked a lot about this card. Um, it's not something that really drew me to the deck, but some a lot of people seem to connect with this, and it's a beautiful card. Um, I can definitely see why. And the world, I love this world card. It's so gorgeous. We have our Ace of Cups. So most of the aces have um, this sort of titling on the artwork, which I think is is fine. But a lot of people complained um, that they because of this, it wasn't easy to um, trim. And uh, I don't trim my decks. I, there's the only decks that I've ever felt like I wanted to trim are the old uh, Los Garabeo decks that have the title of the card in like four different languages at the top, but even that just, it doesn't bother me. Um, and so I just don't trim my decks. I will edge decks occasionally, um, especially if they have a really cardboardy feel on the side, I don't really enjoy that. So I will edge a deck if it feels like that, but I do have several decks that I don't, I haven't edged. So I'm not a big deck modifier, but a lot of people, there was a lot of feedback that it was, it, this would be a hard deck to modify. Um, and trim because of the way, you know, some of the cards have this sort of top border along with the bottom border and some of them don't. Some of the titles have are, you know, within the artwork, some of them aren't. Um, but, you know, um, I did see a video today where over on the Truth and Stories page and I'll link her video uh, down below where she went through how she modified this deck because um, she has a hard time shuffling it. And I have huge hands, right? Like I'm six foot two, I'm a big guy. Um, and even I struggle shuffling this deck because it's so big. Um, and so, you know, I can only imagine if I had, you know, smaller hands, um, how frustrating that could be. Um, and she loves the deck. And she, I think she did a beautiful job of modifying the deck and trimming it and, and really, sort of making it uh, the way that she wanted to. And I think she, you know, overcame a lot of the obstacles that a lot of people talked about. So I'll make sure I link that video in the description below. Um, but yeah, let's continue on. Ace of Cups, the Two of Cups, beautiful. Three of Cups. Four of Cups. Five of Cups. And you can see there are some really distinct nods to uh, the Rider White Smith system in this deck, right? Three spilled cups, you know. Um, so it's not too far of a throw for some people, um, but it is a beautiful animal deck. It's probably my favorite animal deck now. I love this um, Six of Cups, and I love her little tiara, which is just. Fantastic. Um, and I love the, the nose rings, which if I'm not mistaken, this is uh, to signify um, their purity. And then these are typically removed um, after a woman's uh, wedding day in Islamic cultures um, to show that, you know, she's no longer a virgin and that she's with someone. Um, Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but that is my understanding of, of the nose and chain jewelry in that culture. Seven of Cups, all of our choices, which is great. I love this Eight of Cups. <laughs> it's beautiful. And there's so much to dive into here, right? There's some Hebrew on the step that, you know, I'm gonna have to look into and see what it means. Um, it's just beautiful. Nine of Cups. The Contented Pelican. Ten of Cups. The Joyous Sky. All of the killer whales jumping through the sky. That's great. What an interesting uh, take on the Ten of Cups. Then we have our Court Cards. So our Page of Cups. 
Ooh, look at the night. That is awesome. Knight of Cups. Queen of Cups. The artwork in this deck is just amazing. The King of Cups, this third eye. How cool. Alright, Ace of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles. Juggling Snake. Three of Pentacles. Three Wise Masters. Which was a different take, sort of, than the, the standard RWS. It's very interesting. I'd be curious to see what the guidebook says about that card. Four of Pentacles. The Prudent Mountain Goat. <laughs> Five of Pentacles. Six. It's beautiful imagery. Seven. Eight. There's some dust on here from the printers, it looks like. Nine and ten. Look at that ten of pentacles. That is beautiful. The tree of life coming out of the oyster as it's you know pearl basically. What a cool. And the title is the oyster of Metatron. Interesting. We have our page. Check him out. The knight. Aztec Hawk Warrior. Our Queen. And our King. <laughs> it's awesome. And our Ace of Wands. There's the card that I got in my deck. Beautiful card. Two of Wands. Check that out. Three with Metatron's Cube. We all know I'm a fan of Metat Metatron's Cube. Perfect representation of all of the geometric solids. The creative Bone Prism. That's awesome. Four of Wands, the Beaming Vessel. Five of Wands. Six of Wands. Seven of Wands. Oh, Eight of Wands. Check that out. That is gorgeous. Nine of Wands. Ten of Wands. The Overburdened Beetle. <laughs> Very fitting. Page. The Knight of Wands, Queen of Wands, the King of Wands, and to our Ace of Swords. What an interesting two of swords. The Blind Seal. Huh. It's kind of creepy. That kind of creeps me out. Three of Swords, pretty traditional there. The Bleeding Raw Heart. Oh, poor little bunny. The Four of Swords, the Sacred Space. He's resting though, because he poured, pulled the three swords out. So he's getting some rest, and he's gonna be all right. The Five of Swords. Six of Swords. Look at the contrast in this card. Wow. The brand new journey. The Seven of Swords. The Thief in the Night. The Eight of Swords. And the Nine of Swords. Check that out. Wow. The Ten of Swords. Page 
Our knight. Our queen. And our king. And then I think we're into the additional cards now. So these are cards that were added by the artist that are non-traditional tarot cards. Um, so this is El Kashan, the Heedful Mouse. And we have El Ojibwe Catcher, so the Shadow Dream Catcher. And we have, that's really cool. Scratches and stuff. The L Expansion or the Shedding Snake. El Sacred Heart, the Heart and Soul of Goliath. El Karmic Release, the Sacred Karmic Deer. It's a beautiful card. Obviously, that's the box art. El Nature. The Seed of Life. I love that pine cone. That is such a cool pine cone. El Sacred Fire, the Rebirthing Bonfire. El Karmic Soul Tribe, the Family. El Hidden Inner Strength, the Shadow Cat. El Mask, the Hidden Wolf. El Shadow Self. The Dark Inner Swamp. Um, an untitled card, which I'm not sure what is actually being depicted here. I'll have to look that up. El Shaman, the Medicine Healer. El Star Seed, uh, the Demigurg, I think is what it says. Sage, the Purity, and then we have a Yes card and a No card. And that's it. That is the El Goliath. The extra cards are really interesting. I almost think it would be cool to use them as um, an oracle because there's quite a few of them, um, even with the Yes and No cards. So you could use it as a small. Um, Oracle deck if you wanted to it'd be cool to see an Oracle deck companion to this deck because with these cards that would be really cool um, but the artwork in this deck is just amazing and they're the the imagery is so rich and full of symbolism um, it's it's definitely a top quality deck um, you know given the the amount of the, the size of them and the quality of the printing and the um, the gilding and everything that comes with it, it's well worth the money. Um, I am definitely going to spend a lot of time using this personally. Um, I really, I really connected with this the imagery in this deck as soon as I saw it. Um, so I'm excited to um, dive into it. Um, if you have the deck, let me know in the comments below. Um, if you love it, let me know what you um, what your criticisms are of it. Let me know what your uh, favorite card in the deck is. Let me know what you think about um, the extra cards and what you're gonna do with them. Um, you know, I would love to hear all about um, all of these things so that you know we can connect. I really appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me. And as always, remember everyone is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. So be kind, always. Take care everybody.